Hi everyone! In today's video we are going to compare MQTT vs Zero MQ and see what's the best choice for IT. Let us start with MQTT. How does it work? MQTT is a communication protocol designed specifically for IT. Here is an example of the publish subscribe architecture of the MQTT protocol. The car represents the client or the publisher, which, as the name suggests, publishes data. Sitting at the center of the communication is the broker, an agent that manages connected IoT devices and the messages that are exchanged between these devices. To the right of the broker, two subscribers subscribe to receive data from the MQTT broker. The publisher sends a specific data point to the broker and the broker sends it to all the interested subscribers. Bidirectional communication flow allows subscribers to also be publishers. Let us move on to Zero MQ. What is it and how does it work? Zero MQ is an asynchronous messaging library. The Zero stands for Zero Broker, Zero Cost and Zero Administration. It is used in distributed and concurrent applications that can run without a dedicated message broker and defines a wire protocol, an application layer protocol. However, it requires an API to be used. Here is an example of a small-scale PubSub network from the Zero MQ guide. Now that you understand the basics of MQTT and Zero MQ, let's do a quick comparison of them. MQTT uses a client-server-based PubSub architectural pattern, while Zero MQ uses a peer-to-peer -peer model. Zero MQ can also employ broker-based PubSub communication. The major difference, however, is the heavy lifting that you have to perform with Zero MQ in order to achieve the broker-based PubSub communication pattern that is inherent in MQTT. Consequently, Zero MQ is not IoT ready, while MQTT offers plug-and-play capabilities for IoT. Both technologies use TCP/IP as their underlying protocol, but Zero MQ also uses UDP and shared memory. Security is a huge characteristic to consider. MQTT uses TLS plus username password, while Zero MQ uses PLAIN, Curve, ZMQ, and ZAP. A significant advantage of MQTT over Zero MQ is client observability. MQTT allows the client state to be monitored via notifications when the client unexpectedly disconnects, which is not possible in Zero MQ. In MQTT, the broker can queue messages for disconnected subscribers, while in Zero MQ only some MQ socket types have it. The minimum message overhead is the same for MQTT and Zero MQ at 2 bytes. Message size is 256 MB maximum in MQTT. In Zero MQ it is 2 to the power of 63 minus 1 bytes per frame. Small message size requires fewer resources. For example, smaller messages take less network bandwidth and data storage requirements. In addition, MQTT doesn't have message fragmentation while Zero MQ does. Having fragmented data threatens the integrity of communication. If any data gets lost in the movement, the message cannot be reassembled without corruption. MQTT uses binary encoding for content type, while Zero MQ uses any data encoding mechanism XML, JSON, HTTP, etc. for content type, as long as the target platform knows how to parse it. Message distribution in MQTT is one to many and varies in Zero MQ. MQTT provides three qualities of service and thus improves reliability, while in Zero MQ it varies between socket types, which means the equivalent of quality of service 2 would have to be implemented in the application. So what is better for IT, MQTT or Zero MQ? As MQTT was designed for IT solutions, it is much quicker to get started than Zero MQ. MQTT features, which are provided out of the box, including reliability, would have to be re-engineered in Zero MQ and would take significant effort. MQTT cloud services and brokers are available, making the process of building IoT solutions very quickly. Check out MQTT Essentials playlist to learn more about MQTT 
and head to our full blog post on MQTT versus Zero MQ for a more detailed technologies comparison. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.